sometimes figuring out where you want to start can be a little daunting. But um, for me, I just decided I'll, I usually start everything with an eye, even portraits. I just start with the eye. And you can always erase it and move it. As you see later on, you're going to see that I pretty much changed that first eye. The main objective is to just get started. Just start moving your pencil. You can always go back and make changes. That way you don't get overwhelmed and you don't have this feeling of negativity before you even get started. I usually try not to erase, especially when I'm just doing my preliminary sketch. I always tell um, my the people I was teaching, I can't give too much information, but uh, it was a group of boys that I was showing how to draw, and I always tell them, um, don't erase. Because when you start erasing, you start feeling discouraged, like you're just not getting it right, you're messing up. Just keep drawing, and if you see the mistake, it's easier to correct it. So just leave your stray lines and your crazy wrong shapes there that way you can draw around it the right way and you can always go back and erase it and sometimes they just blend right in with your sketch but in that case I was erasing just because um that wasn't the shape I made the shape the wrong way or that line was just going to interfere with how it looked but yeah it's okay to erase a little but try not to erase too much and as you can see my eyes are a little bit wonky but I can just go back in and correct them. And you see, that's what I was saying with that first eye. Just get your pencil going and get something on the paper. You can always correct it or move it or reshape it. I don't know why I'm wearing white nail polish with charcoal. You can see my nails are not white anymore. <laughs> and I don't know where I developed. Well, I developed that finger up in college trying to write notes. I don't know why I thought that finger was in the way and it was keeping me from writing faster. And now that's just how I draw and write. And college was not for art. I went to college and got a health science degree. Okay, here I'm trying to decide where the nose goes or where it should be. What I'm gonna do is take the distance between the top and the bottom of the eye that I've already drawn and kind of draw that same measurement all the way down. I looked at the reference picture and decided it was about five or six of those spaces down, the eye spaces down. So I went down that many times and I drew a line to kind of keep in my mind how many I've gone down and that's where I draw or drew the top of the nose. And you notice that the wolf's nose is pretty much an upside down triangular shape with the nostrils drawn in. As you draw and get more familiar with subjects and get practice in, you start to realize that um, you start to kind of get your proportions. Like the wolf's nose, you know it's no wider than the space between his eyes. So that kind of helps you reference how wide it should be. I looked at the picture and noticed that his mouth is very close to the bottom of his nose. And you just kind of have to 
you, you're constantly constantly looking at your reference picture. You're not just drawing willy-nilly and then looking up and seeing if it's right. You're looking at the reference picture maybe just as much as your the paper you're drawing on. It's a constant look up, look down, or look over, wherever your reference is. And I know that the size of his mouth don't expand past the corners of his eye, the outer corners of his eye. And it's nothing scientific. I mean, your your picture is not going to be exactly like the reference. It shouldn't be because you're drawing it and it's your piece. You can, you're just using the picture as a reference. Because if you want it the same, you just, you know, get your printer and print it out. But it's going to be, it's going to have a little bit of an organicness to it. I don't know if that's a word, but I just made it one. Because it's, you know, it's art. So don't get discouraged when your work is not exactly like your reference picture. It's not supposed to be. And always keep going. Your preliminary sketch, usually, it can really make you think you're not doing well. It doesn't look good. But you just have to keep going. And at some point, you will see it coming together. And you see here, I'm correcting the eyes. Just like I said, you can always go back and make corrections. I decided his eyes were a little small, so I just went back and made them bigger. And if you ever see proportions wrong, just think about what is the easiest to fix? Would it have been easier for me to reshape his nose and his mouth or the eyes? And I decided the eyes could be bigger because that's the most simple to fix. And you see the first line I drew for his head was wrong. I just left it. I'm just going to keep going. And this part here, um, you don't have to look at the reference part as much. Well, I didn't. Um, because that part is kind of, you know, you know where the wolf's ears are going to be in his head shape. So that part, you know, you kind of look forward to those parts because they're a little easier. You can kind of just wing it and it'll be good. Kind of the common sense parts. You just know, okay, this part is pretty much just going to be a lot of fur and his ears, the bottom of his ears. This is all just his fur, and there's no scientific... You don't have to sit and get every line from the reference down on this piece of paper. You can just say, okay, what direction is the fur going in? Okay, I'm just going to draw a bunch of lines in that direction. Okay, in this area here, what direction is the fur going in? Okay, I'm just going to draw a bunch of curved lines in this direction. So, you know, there are parts of this where you can um, take your artistic lead. And this is my favorite part when I switch pencils and get to go darker. This is my actual charcoal versus the first pencil was um, just graphite, which is very light. I was just using a graphite, what is this, 2H? I can't see it. My pencils are so worn, I can't really see. Yeah, it is a 2H. Start off with a very light, if you have a set of graphite pencils, or just a regular, you know, number two pencil from school. Just be um, light-handed with it. But if you get a pack of graphite pencils, I always use um, between 3H, I'm sorry, 2H and 3H. Because you don't want it to be too heavy. And charcoal does not, sometimes it doesn't go over graphite. Depending on how thick your graphite layer is, the charcoal will not draw over it. It will just slide over it because graphite is slippery. So you don't want to put down a heavy layer of graphite. You want it to be as light as possible so you can go over it with your charcoal and darken your picture. I learned that the hard way. I drew outcast in graphite and I couldn't get that picture dark to save my life and I realized graphite does not mix with charcoal. So the picture was just, it's just as shiny as it can be and light. And this is all the same pencil. You just change the pressure that you apply to the pencil. You don't have to sit there and go from hard to medium to soft with your charcoal pencils. And that's the different grades that the charcoal pencils come in. When you buy a set, you have hard, medium, soft, and extra soft. And the softer the graph, I'm sorry, the softer the charcoal is, the darker it is. So here I'm just using hard because I am still pretty much putting down my lines. Shading and all the extra details will come later, and then I'll use my darker pencils, depending on what, what area I'm in. When I come back to those dark areas around the eyes, I'll probably get as dark as the extra soft, which is 6B. Soft is 4B, medium is 
what is this, 2B. And hard is, I haven't looked at these in so long, I can't remember, HB. I can barely see it, it's so rubbed off. Yeah. And graphite pencils, when you see Bs and Hs, it's the same on charcoal as it is for graphite. The um, H, I'm not sure exactly what it stands for, but I'm going to say hard, and the B is for, like, black. I'm not sure exactly, but I just use them. I just, you know, drew with them, and I figured it out. But I know there is a YouTube video, I'm sure a thousand YouTube videos, actually, that explain it. But um, when you get in the H's, the higher the number, the darker the H graphite pencil will be and then when you get into the B's they're even darker and the higher the number goes the darker it is so the higher the number the darker and B is darker than H so if you want something really as dark as you can get it with graphite depending on your pencil set like mine goes up to F F is the darkest pencil in my graphite set and H is the lightest And you'll feel the difference when you're drawing with them. Like the H is really hard. It feels kind of scratchy. It does not want to get dark in any kind of way. But the F is pretty dark and it kind of just glides on smooth. And that's for graphite. I don't use graphite often, but, you know, when you feel like using graphite, there's a little information for you. And here I'm just doing some details around the eyes. Try not to get too dark yet because you never want to get dark until you're absolutely comfortable with your sketch and your lines and your shading um, foundation. You just Right now I'm just putting down the foundation for where I want to shade and darken and lighten. In some areas, I know it's supposed to be darker. So right there in that kind of um, furrow brow area for the wolf, I did go in and put down a little dark. That way I know that area is supposed to be pitch black. When I come back in with my extra soft, I'll know what to do there. Because by the time you get ready to really put on your final layer, which is the extra soft, you should just be able to look at the picture and tell what you need to do. You don't really have to look at your reference. You should, but you don't have to if you don't want to. The more you draw, the more comfortable you get with it. And you might not have to look at your reference. Because like I said, it is your art. If you're done looking at your reference, you're done. And you just look at what you've put down and complete it. And here I'm just making very short rows of um, strokes of pencil marks to give it that furry effect. And you just keep your pencil moving and keep your pencil on your paper if that's what you prefer. That's what I prefer here. I don't want to make it sound like I'm telling you how to draw. This is just what I do. And I hope you can get some ideas for yourself as to, you know, what you want to do for drawing. And I'm just getting rid of all the stray marks. Because sometimes the stray marks do um, kind of throw you off. But you'll know when to erase and when not to. Or when you don't have to. I'm pretty much just going in and finding all the darker areas on the wolf. So I can go in with this charcoal pencil and darken them in. Okay, now I'm darkening the nose because it will be a dark area on this wolf. So now I know I can go in a little bit darker, but not too dark yet. Because I don't want to make it so dark as to where the very dark places don't really pop out the way they should. But I'm just laying down the foundation so I know, okay, this is supposed to be darker. 
Okay, I'm just giving some fur effect with the short lines. And there's a little bit of a shadow kind of coloring where his whiskers are going to be. I'm just drawing that in. And you see here, I decided, you know, well, I actually looked at the reference picture and realized this part is not just a solid black color. There's some dimensions and some shapes in this nose. So I'm going in with my pencil and I'm looking at the reference and I'm not making corrections. This is not precisely how the reference looks, but when I finish, I look at it and it looks good to me. So I go with it. But I do know that his nostrils are completely black, so I can go in with that shape and make it as dark as possible. And this shape above the nose, which is kind of the shine of his nose, or um, the shadow on his nose, not the shine, the shadow on his nose is very dark. It's just as dark as the nostril. And I believe I've switched pencils here. I believe this is my, let me look and see. That is my medium, so I still haven't gotten into the soft yet. I, I usually take, do a few more layers before I get to the soft and the extra soft because you really want to make sure you have it right first because extra soft and soft is hard to erase, especially if you're really pressing down into the paper. So it's good to make sure when you put it down, you're confident that that's where it goes. So you see how those shapes and those shadows in the nose make it look more realistic? Instead of just coloring that whole shape in black, now you have a 3D looking nose with shadows and a little bit of shine and some dimension to it. And sometimes you think you're done and you just look at your reference again and you'll see more shapes and lines that you maybe missed. And when I'm confident with, with what I've drawn, I go back in and add another layer just to make it a little darker. And it's good to go in and do that. You don't have to complete every line. You don't have to go over and do your layers across every line. Uh, let me see if I can explain that better. You don't have to do your entire wolf one layer at a time um, completely. I hope I hope that makes sense. <laughs> you can do one section like I'm doing his nose. I'm doing I did one layer with the um, lighter pencil. Then I did the medium layer and then I just did it again. I just went back over that same shadow over his nose for the third time. Those are the layers. You don't have to do the entire picture in layers. You can just do a section one layer at a time until you feel like you get it done. And that way um, or you get it layered enough to where you feel like you can move on. And that way you can kind of see it come into life. Because if you do your entire picture like that, like you do one layer for the whole wolf, and then you go back and you try, try to do the other layer, <clears throat> the slightly darker layer across the whole wolf, and then you do the third dark layer across the whole wolf, that kind of gets tedious and you don't really see your progress. And you kind of feel like, what am I doing this for? But you can move around. You can be, you can draw one eye and then finish the other eye at the end or... You can draw it however you want to, whatever makes you comfortable. For me, I like to go in and start putting in my dark layers because I like to see it come to life. If I've been drawing for about 20 minutes or so, it's time for me to start seeing something. And if I start getting kind of caught up in the details and feeling like they're just tedious, I move on to the bigger things, like I'm back on his chin now. I'm doing long strokes. That's kind of like a break from doing all the little strokes and trying to get things precise and the details. And when I say precise, I'm not saying um, precise in relation to the reference. My own idea of what I want it to look like. That kind of precision. Okay, now I'm just trying to get the groundwork for the shape of the wolf's face because it kind of looks like he's just 
in a snow bank. <laughs> he, he's just eyes and nose appearing up out of some snow or something. So we're going to give him some, you know, give his face some shape. And we're going back in to do the corners of his mouth a little darker. You see how they pop out now? Now it feels like I'm actually getting somewhere. It's starting to look like what I envisioned it looking like when I started. I feel like I'm getting closer to the end. Because I can't tell you how many times I've sat down to draw something and it was going so slow. I just stopped. I think every artist has a sketchbook, at least one sketchbook full of things they started and stopped on. I know I do. I have several. And sometimes you go back and you finish them. And these are the little places where his whiskers come out. And I realized that looking at the reference, I knew that they weren't very heavy dots, but I still ended up kind of doing some too heavy. So that's what I'm erasing. I'm not really erasing the dot. I'm just making it lighter. Because they are kind of a mixed match, kind of some are light, some are dark, some are almost non-existent. And I kind of went in a little too heavy with this charcoal. And with charcoal, you do have to be careful that you don't make your lines too heavy. It's good that if you need a light line to use your graphite. Or just do like I did, draw it and erase a little bit. And here I'm just making this section right by his mouth a little white because I looked at the reference and saw that it was a little bit white close to that line. Now I'm just working on the fur. A lot of this is going to be fur and I have decided I'm just going to make short strokes and I'm going to do that kind of um, typewriter kind of thing like we used to do in elementary school and middle school when you color in when you color in something you kind of do those rows of, of vertical lines like you just scribble up and down across and then you go above that and you scribble up and down across and you go above that and you can kind of see the different rows. I know um, sometimes they tell you not to color in like that, like you're supposed to, um, I guess, I can't even think of the word, hash marks or something like that. You're supposed to do it to where you don't see those lines when you're a quote unquote professional. But here it works because fur, you know, is a lot of lines and going in different directions. So now I get to do that and it's easy. You have to make it simple for yourself when you can, so you can continue to enjoy working on the piece. In some areas, the lines are a little longer. You just look at your reference and kind of see what what is the length of this fur, where is it going. Change your directions. Move your paper. You don't have to keep your paper in one place. You can move your paper. You can have it upside down if you want to. You see a lot of artists, they move their paper all around. And that's why it just you know helps you get that direction that you want. But here on his forehead, his temple area, around the eyes, the nose, all that is short fur. So I'm going to use short strokes. But here I'm drawing his ears. And of course, his ears have long hairs in them. Like your house cats and dogs, they have long hairs in their ears. So that's why these lines are longer. And here, once again, he has some dark spots in there, so I'm going to go in and draw that in dark, but not as dark as it can possibly be. They are going to be pitch black, but for now I'm going to keep it just a dark reference for when I get to that step, because right now I'm still just doing my layers, a few layers at a time, and then when I'm absolutely finished, I will come in with my extra soft pencil and make what needs to be pitch black, pitch black. And this wolf has some dark areas on his forehead. Kind of goes up the snout, up to his forehead, and then it frames his face down to his eyes. And his nose, mouth, and the corners of his mouth are pretty much the darkest areas on his face, and of course around the eyes. But I'm just doing these lines to make him not look snow white, because he's not snow white. He's gray. And brown and black. 
So I have to try to convey those colors with my, you know, black pencil on white paper, which is what you do when you make darker lines, medium, dark lines, and light lines. If you ever watch black and white TV, you see, you can kind of tell what's red. You can tell what's white, what's gray, what's black. And you can just generally tell what's a color versus what's black. There's that medium, you know, the different shades of gray and kind of tell you what's what. You might not be able to tell exactly what color it is, but you can tell, okay, this is a color. She's not wearing a black dress here or, you know, she's not wearing a white dress. It must be some color and it's a light color or it's a dark color. And here I'm kind of just winging it. I'm just filling it in because I'm not going to draw every line exactly like it is on the reference. I'm just going to say, okay, this patch here is a little darker. This patch here is a little lighter. He has this kind of light stripe here. We're going to leave that a little lighter. You just get a feel for it. And now the thing is, now that I'm on the other side, I have to try to make it all blend together. I don't want it to look like, okay, she worked on that side, then she came over here because I see that line of demarcation. So you just kind of go back over, overlap, you know, what you did already with the other side. Just blend them together. And don't forget to keep your direction going. You can move your paper. That way you're not smearing your hand across your work, which I tend to do often. I probably, you'll probably see me do it here. I forget to pick my hand up. And see, I'm going around. I'm not just going straight up and down. I'm still doing my rows, but I'm moving the direction of them. See, now I'm kind of going straight up and down. And here I'm going off to, well, it's my right, but I'm kind of going off to the left a little bit. Wait, no, it's not my right. <laughs> He's actually filming. I was looking at it through a mirror, and I, I forget that um, the mirror turns everything. But yeah, I'm still veering off just a little bit to the left. And now I'm back straight up and down. And that gives your fur a realistic look. Because if this was just going straight up and down, it would look like a drawing, and you want it to look more realistic. Well, I guess not a, um, that's, that was a bad example. It would look more like, um, I guess it would look less experienced. You want it to look like you know what you're doing as much as you can. And here I'm still veering off to the left. I'm putting in the dark spots to give it some dimension so you can tell what's what. You don't want him to just look like a big blob of gray marks. You want to have some dimension so you can say, oh, okay, that's where his ear is. Or that's the outline of his head or, or whatever else it could be. And people should be able to look and see, okay, there's some longer hairs, there's some dark spots. Those must be his ears because, you know, this picture veers off, it, um, actually expands off the paper. I picked a reference, you know, it wasn't the best reference, but I liked the eyes of this wolf. So I said, okay, I can just draw it with the ears coming off the page. That's fine. My goal was to actually draw him and just wing the ears you know you know what ears look like if I have part of the ears I can draw the whole ear but when I started drawing I wanted his face a little closer so I said okay that's fine I'll just keep his ears kind of off the page and that's you know a little less work to do too but he has some a little bit of dark a few dark hairs here separating his ear from his face or from the top of his head. And I drew that line a little too literal. You'll see me go back and um, correct it later by putting some breaks in it. And I did erase some breaks into it 
to make it look a little more organic instead of just a almost solid straight line. And here now my lines are horizontal. They went from being vertical to horizontal. And here's that kind of mark behind his eyes that really gives him that wolf look. Kind of like a cheetah, you know, when you see that line coming down from their eye, you know, okay, this is a cheetah. Doesn't matter how someone has drawn it, if you see that line, you know it's a cheetah. And he has his dark marking up under both eyes, but they're not the same. And see, I'm going back and darkening this one because I made that one so dark. Let me just go on back and darken this one too. That way I remember, okay, both of these are the same. And you have to pay attention to that because not every animal is going to have some symmetry as far as the darkness goes because, yeah, his shapes are different, but they are the same darkness. And I like how his coloring is just like on the top half of his face and his cheeks are almost pure white. Now here I've just realized on the reference that he has sort of a triangular shape of darker hair from his nose extending upward. And that's the good thing about looking at your reference too because sometimes you miss things. You don't see everything right off because you're just trying to get your basic shapes down. But as you draw, you start the details start opening up to you and I realize, oh okay, he does have a little bit, a slightly darker triangular shape right above his nose. So you just go back in and fill it in. but it's good to constantly look at your reference. And like I said, not to get everything precisely right, but just to get the details that you need to make it look um, as close to your reference as you want it to look. Because I did pick this picture for a reason. I do like this wolf, so I do want it to be close to him. But I'm also gonna you know, not stress about the details. And here I notice he has a white patch. That area right there that I'm kind of clearing out is a little white. And I kind of like that little eyebrow. So I realized, okay, let me make this other side lighter too. Because I just kind of colored it in. And that's something I didn't really notice in the beginning. So that's another correction I made because I kept looking. And now the details are really popping. Here I'm putting some texture in his fur because he does have some white and gray and black variations throughout his fur. Kind of like if you have a dog that has um, different colors or a tabby cat or, you know, any animal with a lot of different colors in their fur. If you ever, you know, look at their fur that's on your jacket or wherever you see, maybe the top is light, the middle is dark, and the bottom is light again or black. His fur seems to have that effect. So when you're drawing all these different colors, that's because his fur is different colors down in there. And maybe different parts of it is, are exposed. <coughs> Excuse my voice. I'm a little dehydrated. Okay, so now I'm moving on to another layer. I'm adding the kind of medium gray layer now. 
And you see, I didn't go around his whole face for the layer right before this. I'm just going to kind of go where I want to go. It doesn't have to be 100% uniform. You can jump around on your picture. I've drawn complete portraits before and didn't have an eye until the very end. I was missing an eye because I just didn't want to draw the other eye. So I did it last. Okay, here I'm just filling it in. And in the picture, it's very obscured as to which direction the fur is going. So I'm kind of just doing it how I want. I printed it out and it didn't print very well. It wasn't the, um, I guess the picture wasn't necessarily made for being printed out with much detail. And that's okay because it's just a reference. Like I said, I'm kind of doing, doing it how I want to. This is just to help me understand what a wolf looks like. Like his eyes are not shaped like this in a reference. That's how I wanted them to look. But it was just a certain aspect of this particular wolf picture that I liked. And that's why I went with it. I liked his face. His snout wasn't too long. His eyes weren't too beady. I could see a little bit of his ears. And I liked how thick his fur was. So I chose him. I just noticed that the space, that black space around his eyeballs was a little bit thicker. So I'm coming back in and making a correction. I'm also trying not to make his eyeballs too small. Because like I said, I didn't want his eyes to be beady. So I don't want to make them that way now. I'm just taking some of the harshness off of the edges around his eye. It's such a stark contrast between those two areas. Kind of looks like someone with makeup on. I'm still going to come back and make some correction to, co corrections to those eyes because I want them, the edges softer. They're, a little, they're still kind of hard. He's starting to kind of look foxy. Let me uh, reword that, like a fox. <laughs> I didn't realize that I was kind of getting in and out of the shot, so I'm just going to go in and fast forward through this part to kind of help cut down on the length of this video. As you can see, it's just long strokes with a long fur. So you can still kind of see what I'm doing. I don't really have to narrate that part. All right, I'm going to fast forward. Okay, again, I'm sorry about that. I didn't realize I was out of shot. I'm kind of just barely in the shot here, but at least you can see what I'm doing. Here, I'm just going in and making the shine more prominent in his eyes with my motorized eraser. And as I mentioned before, I just got this from Hobby Lobby. It was about $10. It comes with a bunch of refill eraser bits, small ones and larger ones. And it takes, um, I think triple-A batteries, two triple-A batteries, I believe. And you just unscrew it at the bottom, just in case that, that might have helped somebody. <laughs> I hope. And this is just a piece of chalk. I was going to see if it would make the lines um, disappear, like maybe it would make the white go over the line that I just erased. And it did a little bit. Sometimes chalk is good for those kind of things. If that doesn't work, I just just get a little bit of paint, some plain acrylic paint, and put a dot on there. But I'm going to come back and fix that anyway, because that's not quite where I want the shine to be. It's in two different directions, so I have to come back and correct that. But that's just me skipping all around the picture, the drawing. 
And here I'm just trying to fill in the white um, areas. They are white in the picture, but they do have um, some fur texture. So I'm just giving it a little bit of texture so it doesn't look like laziness. Once again, I keep going down off the page, off the screen. I was so sure I was going to stay in it. Yep, going off the page. I keep saying page, I'm going off the screen. Let's see, I think I'm going to speed this part up too. I don't think there's anything vital here. Well, except for um, I'm making a zigzag kind of pattern with my pencil marks. Just to give it some a realistic look. I kind of pick my pencil up and pick it up somewhere else. I'm just moving my pencil and maneuvering it as I go. But all in one fluid motion. And here I'm back to the short strokes. And now I'm kind of correcting that black line. See how I skipped that place in between to make it look more realistic instead of, see how straight that line is? It's not natural at all. So see, that little bit did make it look much better. And I skipped that gap in there. And I'm just erasing some lines through there. Not actually erasing the line, but just putting some white strokes through there. Okay, now I'm just going to draw the other side of his mouth. And I'm giving it some texture by making small lines, straight lines, branching from that dark area. I am darkening my dark areas now, making them smoother. And I actually noticed that I missed a few areas on his nose. So I'm going in to um, finish it up. I'm putting a new eraser on my pencil. I like to have an eraser on my pencil because, you know, I just flip it over and I expect to erase and then there's no eraser and it's kind of a kind of takes time away so I try to go in and have it ready and you see that is my soft pencil oh no I'm sorry it's, it's my extra soft pencil so here I'm pretty confident of what I have I'm just pretty much doing the nostril and the areas that I know for sure I got right and I know for sure are pitch black and I just want to smooth out that black in the nose because it was kind of patchy if you noticed. I am now just smoothing in my black area in the nostril because charcoal tends to draw um, very rough so it does leave patches. You'll see little white spots in your work. So the key is to go back with your darkest pencil or whatever pencil. I usually use my darkest one and fill it in by just moving your pencil in short marks. 
going left, right, up, down, however you need to, to fill in those spaces. And you really have to just move methodically and just a little at a time. And make sure you're looking, as you move your pencil, look back and see if you colored in all the spots that you want it colored in. So it takes a little bit of time, but it's not too bad. It's not bad at all. You really have to watch your edges with charcoal too because you think the charcoal is just breaking up and all the edges just have dust on them but you blow it off and you see that your edges are actually that rough you really have to have your pencil sharp and move carefully around your edges to make them smooth that's just another note about charcoal charcoal um, it does take some getting to know but it's very dark and it's very nice. Once you really get the hang of it, it's, it's wonderful. I love using charcoal. Graphite to me is um, shiny and slippery. But it blends very nice. I do like shading with charcoal and blending it because it's so smooth. But I like depth. And for me, if I want depth, I use charcoal. There, There is graphite that gets really dark. I just haven't run across it. And charcoal is just something I have come to really like using so you just have to play around with graphite and charcoal and see which one you like better but there are uh, some similarities and some differences you just have to decide which one you like as you can this see I'm not is actually more, um, setting the precedent as to well I'm about to I how I want the rest of my picture adding in a the few depth more shapes in this that nose I, and the dimensions that I see in it is I didn't what see I want for the whole picture, there. so now I'm going to try to base my eyes. You know, all the really back in, and like I said before, the parts that really gonna, stand out. Like I said, I was going to come back parts. and fill it in. I think um, I did on this nose, <laughs> but I'm um, the way it's going back the way it's filling in what I might have missed to help so we can have the nose realistic full dimension that I want it to because I really feel like this nose looks realistic, and I want to get those eyes to look like this too. Now I'm just, you know, adding some more details. I'm going to come back in and darken this uh, Robert De Niro kind of area a little bit more. When I drew that, that's what I thought about. He's who I thought about. This wolf looks like Robert De Niro. If you don't know who that is, it's the guy that did the... Um, he was in Meet the Parents. He was the dad. And he was in Goodfellas and... I'm trying to think of the names of these movies. He was he's pretty much the typical gangster kind of character that he's always cast for that kind of role. He was in the family, he was the dad in the family. Um they made him into a shark on Shark Tale and he had the mole then. You know, they put that mole on him because everybody knows his mole. Yeah, that was just a side note. <laughs> Has nothing to do with this, but yeah, that's my mind while I'm drawing. I see your mind can just kind of, when you're drawing, you can just kind of think on stuff and have a, it's just supposed to be calm and relaxing. It's not supposed to be stressful. You shouldn't be thinking, oh my goodness, that line. Oh, that's wrong. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, is this like the reference? You should, you know, after you get your preliminary sketch down, you should be able to just kind of relax a little and just draw in what you know should be there. Look at your reference and it should just kind of, it should have a flow to it. It shouldn't be stressful.
and I'm just going in and darkening things because I think overall I'm going to make him pretty dark. So I want to make these areas really dark so when I darken everything else they still stand out. My original plan was to draw a black wolf but I couldn't figure out how I was going to draw that and still and not just have a black mass on the paper with a nose and eyes sticking out of it. I didn't really want to go that route I wanted it to be a wolf I didn't want it to be more like um you know like they draw panthers like that they just draw pretty much the eyes and the nose mostly the eyes shining I didn't really want to go that route I really wanted the wolf's features and fur to show I might draw it like that later so the black wolf idea kind of took a back seat and then I kind of just said well whatever happens when I draw that's what will happen you can kind of get a feel for something when you're drawing how you want to do it and I might finish it and then come back and fix it up later or change it later. You can do that when it's your art. Now I'm getting into the longer strokes. I'm just darkening that dark area that's in his ear. And then I'm drawing longer lines to show that fur that's in his ears. Like I say, anybody with a pet, you see your pet's ears. They have those long hairs that keep... I guess dust and things out of them like we have the short hairs in our ears they have long hairs because they're animals I guess so that's what I'm drawing here and you should like I say you should be able to understand that oh, okay this is his ear because that fur is so much longer And now I'm just adding a little detail in the fur that gives it a little more dimension. Those are my favorite words, dimension, detail, <laughs> depth, like I said. But these things do make up a portrait, so I hope this is helping someone. And I hope I'm explaining it properly, or at least close enough to where you can get what I'm trying to say. And here I'm darkening some more lines because I want them to stand out when I make them a little darker. And here's that definitive line from the eye that really lets you know it's a wolf. And there's another area that I realize I missed. He has a little bit more dark fur over the eye. And see what a difference that makes with his eye it's good to keep going and that's why you work in layers and you can move all around and you just make sure you keep looking at your reference picture i mean really if someone was looking at you or looking at me while i'm drawing and see me and they were to see me looking at my paper looking at my reference they would be like how are you drawing when you're looking up that much and it kind of looks crazy but that's what you have to do because you don't there's nothing worse than drawing and not looking at your reference and then you look up at it and say wow that's totally not what is on the paper that's not what's on that photo or that printout this is nothing like that and that's why it doesn't look like what I want it to draw so now I have to erase or start over okay from this point I think um, everything that I'm going to do is what we've already discussed adding the details adding the dimension in the fur the short strokes and the long strokes etc so i'm just going to go and fast forward and end and uh, go ahead and do my final um words for this video i do hope to post a second part soon with the completed wolf um and i hope this was helpful i hope i explained everything to where it was somewhat understandable i hope thank you so much for watching this video um, again, my name is Andrus Jefferson. I'm on Facebook as Andrus Jefferson. That's A-N-D-R-I-S. And also Art by Andrus. I also have a jewelry page because I make handmade jewelry. That page is Art by Andrus Jewelry. I'm also on Instagram as Art by Andrus. Again, I hope this video was helpful and I thank you so much for watching. And I do hope to post the second part very soon. Thank you again.